innovation when you say it is a matter of time you cannot say what you see as innovation today may have been done by somebody some years back or decades back innovation happens when the material technology advances the skill in the country both for design and construction advances and infrastructure advances in what it can give as support to the construction industry now when we talk of innovations in design and construction in steel structures perhaps many of you at least the senior ones are conditioned by the 70s and 80s in india where steel had to be preserved or it has to be consumed as little as possible because we had an economic condition wherein this was a must so therefore we always used to think of saving as much of steel and concrete naturally took the place of steel in several inst instances but as far as steel constructions are concerned there are certain structures the steel cannot be replaced like some of the examples that i am going to present so therefore innovations that we talk about has happened in this country when the material technology has advanced as it was pointed out by the previous speakers i have the handicap of my previous speakers having told so many things which i wanted to say but doesn't matter even if it is a little bit of repetition it doesn't matter so therefore innovations in uh, steel structures we will try to see how it has happened over the years with a little uh, fairly long research background and equally long consulting practice i will put across to you some of the structures which were general knowledge plus some of the specific experience of design and construction by me in the process i will also point out as we develop one of the major handicaps of the construction industry in india today is that we do not have the skills required even as we talk about advances in steel structures like peb and uh, coal form sections and coal uh, galvalume sheets or coated sheets we still have the problem of skills i will point out that my friends from the industry should excuse me for pointing fingers at them but that i consider it as a must for me with my research background cast iron pillars were the earliest form of not steel iron in the use of building construction or for that matter any construction remarkable steel structures were the london bridge the san francisco bridge the eiffel tower the howrah bridge in india traditional use of steel was in rail bridges rails railway platform covers storage tanks pipes large industrial sheds oil refineries most multi level process plants transmission towers chimneys now you can see this familiar structures of san francisco bridge or the london bridge the howra bridge or the eiffel tower on the normal rail bridge which you can see now even a lot of it being built in india or the railway platform covers one thing which you look and we must appreciate as innovation in the railway platform covers is for a structural designer the ideal form of a structure is the one which follows the natural bending moment diagram the rolled steel sections naturally do not give that and that is where the peb and the coal form sections or other forms of structural we call it form engineering gains the point or plus point this is one example of that because a cantilever is a, instead of a parabolic at least the nearest one as a linear triangular truss makes and follows the bending moment diagram oil storage tanks some of these 
I do not think in the years to come it will be uh, anything and replace this. Steel structures, the oil tanks will continue to be, although there have been attempts made to provide concrete as a substitute, but I don't think it will uh, succeed in that at attempt. Oil refinery, all the piping and all the structures, support structures will continue to be in. The attempts made in cable state bridges in different form of structure, the structure has concrete pillars, concrete deck, but the cable supports the structure. Transmission line towers and chimneys will continue to be in steel, although the smaller dimensions Concrete has taken over the poles, poles in pipe and pipes also. We see this today in the use of space, this innovations. We see in space frames, braced domes, PEB structures, castellated beams, coal form sections, hollow box sections, white flange edge sections, cable state bridges, computerized designs and improved construction engineering helped to promote this in India. The speaker has a direct experience in design and construction of some of these. We may quote from some of the structures that we have built, space frames in NIOT, Air India, new uh, terminal facilities at Hyderabad, Raja Mutaya Hall in Chennai, castellated beams we have built, designed and built over 200 retail outlets for the oil companies in different parts of the country where we have used the castellated or open web systems. Open web systems for storage structures in, uh, for various organizations, coal form sections. We are talking today, I think my, uh, subsequently Tata Steel is uh, talking about Structura. Uh, I think 20 years back when it was introduced, I started using the Structura in a structure in, and subsequently also in Kochi. The space frames, this what you see here, I don't know whether the drawing is, the sketch is clear. This is a space frame designed for the entrance of the National Institute of Ocean Technology, which was designed by Pithaudian and partners. We did this structure. This is something like 15 to 16 years old. This is a three dimensional, 330 meter diameter church building in my hometown in Kerala. And you can imagine for erecting this, somebody had made this reference, I think Mithi Ishara has made this reference. On a small town like Tiruvalla, a 120 ton crane was brought in and it was a spectacle for the town. This was done some uh, 10 years back. The entire space frame was fabricated in Chennai and transported uh, to uh, this is a space frame made out of angles built for the Raja Mutaya Hall in uh, Ekmoor, designed by Pithawadian partners. This is a braced dome which we hold, we held, I should say, a patent for this material. This is a 54 meter diameter braced dome as a cover for a multi-purpose hall in Gandhi Nagar. Ahmedabad, Gandhinagar, Gujarat. You can see the outer cover in those days. This is, I would say, maybe about uh, 25 years back that we have done this. So therefore, don't take innovation when we say it's, we had the knowledge, we had the capacity and material available. But one weakness of this, I am not even sure whether this structure is there today. Because it, we had a problem of covering this structure because in those days you did not have the sealants of the proper type. Castellated and open web systems, you see cut and reverse RS joists to follow the bending Bowman diagram has been extensively used for cantilevers of the, most of the oil retail outlets have got a four and a half to five meter cantilever. And for that, the principal members, the cantilevers were designed and used as cut and reversed RS joists, which increases the bending moment, it increases the uh, Z and I towards the support. These are open web joists 
many of the uh, structures where the go downs and so on, we have extensively used it, very light. And on a subsequent table, I will show you what is the efficient use of steel, how much steel you should consume or you could consume. This is a present day PEB structure for a uh, special economic zone at Chayar near uh, Kanchipuram, designed by us. Of course, fabrication done by the PEB supplier. This also the same. You, uh, this is the largest 35 meter span retail outlet with open web and cantilevered joists. You can see the joists or the cantilever cut and reverse members for a BPCL outset, outlet at Mogapair. I don't think the more than 35 meters anywhere it, uh, any retail outlet, outlet has been built. Again, retail outlet, what you see here is the part of the patent for the braced domes where the joints were designed and we had the, held the patent, but now it's 20 years old, the patent is no longer valid. Steel products in structural use are long products, joists, angles, channels, flats, flat products, plates, sheets, coal form sections from thin plates or sheets, which is either HBS, pipes, Z or C sections, rods, wires, strands, meshes, concrete reinforcement in the form of active reinforcement that are used in pre-stressing as a wire, strand or cable and passive reinforcement today of the TMT design. Incidentally, at one time, we, I used to hold the patent for the coal formed, the deformed bars produced by Tata Steel. And of course, the patent is expired now. Now, steel deck, for most of the industrial buildings, you have got the uh, loss form work, I would call it, steel deck construction, which is much faster, and uh, you have to provide the shear keys on the support for making the effective transfer of the concrete and the steel deck to the construction of the beam. This is for a 24 meter span uh, indoor space stadia at the Madras Christian College made out of hollow box sections. And I mentioned to you that uh, structura, today's structura, hollow box sections were used for an 18 meter span building at Kochi. This is at least uh, 18, 19 years old. So you can't say innovations in 2016 uh, with, with the application of structura. Ideal sections for the designer, I mentioned to you, is the one which follows the bending moment diagram versus the I or Z of the section. I think the structural engineers present here will appreciate that statement. PEB and open webs can get this. Reinforced and pre-stressed concrete made effective inroads into the use of, in use in industrial buildings in the 70s, 80s, and 90s in the form of shells, folded plates, and even pre-stressed concrete trusses. There are several examples of that. But today, nobody talks about using the pre-stressed concrete uh, trusses or shells in industrial buildings because time and uh, elegance is a very important factor. Some of these were in the days of shortage of steel in India. Steel is making a comeback with innovations here from higher grades of steel up to 355 you have now. From, from form engineering, increased infrastructure and technology for fabrication, testing facilities and coatings. What can be considered as an effic efficient use of steel in structures, in industrial sheds, 12 to 18 meter spans, 25 to 50 kg. Variation is because of the, either the foundation or the wind loads or seismic load condition of that locality. 20 to 40 meter span, 35 to 80 kg per meter square. In RCC4 buildings, residences in masonry, 15 to 20 kg. Housing in G plus 4 frame, 30 to 45. Housing in G plus 9, 40 to 60. And housing in G plus 14, 50 to 80. In commercial or educational buildings, this could be G plus 4, 40 to 60 kg. And G plus 9, 50 to 70 and G plus 14, 60 to 100 kg per square meter. Concurrent to innovations, lack of understanding in design 
fabrication and erection persists in the construction industry. That is what I refer to as a lack of skills, no matter at what level. Now, I also used to say most of the innovations, no matter what in the construction industry, uh, forgive me for making this statement, that the, these innovators or commercial uh, people are exploiting the ignorance of the client or ignorance of the engineers or, or the user. For example, in concrete, I can say, we see advertisements saying that M grade 53 con uh, cement to be used in plaster. In a building, 50% of the cement is to be used for plaster and masonry. And that you say, use 53 grade, it will do more damage than good. Similarly, you have to understand the promoters of these structures will say that you prorate to the uh, tensile capacity of the building, you will get a proportionate savings. Not, don't go by those commercial exploitation, it never can give it on prorata because on any structural element, the maximum strain or stress is limited to a very small portion of the structure. Unfortunately, you cannot avoid it. So therefore, the proportionate savings will never be in that order. Thin bracings, for example, structure which is in, designed in XX axis is during the erection has to be used in YY axis. Very seldom this is checked, particularly when you go for large spans. And I will show you examples of failures that have taken place or are taking place. Fire resistance is another negative aspect in the steel construction. Thin bracings, even for spans up to 10 meter, 25 millimeter diameter, I don't know if some of you who are using PEB structures have noticed, 25 millimeter diameter bar is used as bracing. Bracing means it should take compression or tension in any direction. And you, I can, with my little finger, I can oscillate the bracing. So there goes your structural strength of the bracing. Design to non-Indian standards for construction in India. Many of the steel designers come with saying that it is designed according to American Institute of Steel Construction. You cannot do a building designed to American Institute of Steel Construction in India. It should be designed to the provisions of the Indian code or National Building Code. This is a must. I think many of you, when you take decisions, you must refer to this, that you cannot do because American Code is made for the American conditions of working. You have seen there, I think Mr. Richard has shown some slide, wherein people very seldom walk on the roof. You have to have for even maintenance machines may be used or suspended uh, People walking on the top, there is a provision in the Indian code that you have to design any structural element for a concentrated load of 90 kg acting anywhere on the structure. It's a provision in the Indian code. Other codes do not have it. But when you are building it in India, you have to follow that till such time the code is revised. Corrosion protection and cost of steel is yet another factor. And, but when you go for, as far as buildings are concerned, when you go for heights more than 30 meters, you have no alternative. Concrete cannot fill in the pro reinforced concrete. You have to go to steel as the structural frame. Now, this is for a 30 meter span space frame designed for the Hyderabad Air India hangar at the new airport at Hyderabad, designed by us. This is a space frame, and you can see during the erection, you cannot erect a single truss. You have to fabricate two trusses together and erect them together. You have to do special erection techniques for that. Now, you look at the Z pearl in used in this structure. This is somewhere else. It's in Bangalore, uh, Mysore actually. A 54 meter span structure was built and the were the rafter used there has buckled during the erection. I had insisted that the, uh, the fabricator should give a, 
erection sequence and erection method. Somehow everybody thought that it can be done. But the first rafter when it was erected, it buckled. The second thing I wanted to point out was this is a 7.5 meter spacing. Z purlin used. Z purlin used in the XX axis is fine. But the same one which is used in the YA axis for cladding the vertical panel, you have to make sure that the sag rods provided are installed right in the beginning. Otherwise, by the time you, you go to install the sheet, it would have sagged already. And this is what you see here. I will show you the slides for that. You can see the buckled girder. This is 54 meter span. And the person who did it, he had the audacity to tell me that I can correct it back. Something which has buckled has gone beyond the yield limit. He says he can correct it. So finally we said you carry this away and we will not accept the, a new girder had to be brought in. You can see the sagged portion on, the, on this side, the Z purlin without the sag rod. Fire, this is the example of a fire, the RC column stands there, but the steel structure has already deflected. Thank you.